Yes. So I have the AMC A list. And what that is, is a monthly subscription service wherein for $19.95 a month, it's a little bit more in, in actual places where people live. I live in a very small town, so it's $19.95 for me. I get up to three movies a week for free, depending on your definition of free. Yes. But anyway, from December 2018 to March of 2020, I watched a whopping 177 movie showings in a 66-week period of time. I say movie showings because I saw, like, Cats four times. I yeah. saw Captain Marvel, like, six. I, it, I may have lost track of how many times I saw Knives Out. But anyway, and, it, and then those are just movies I saw at AMC. So that's not including all the movies I saw at the drive-in. But anyway, uh, I was on a real theatrical roll, and then the pandemic screwed all of that up. But now theaters are back, and so am I. So get ready for some up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week. Ta da Ta da 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 This week's installment of Steve Stubbs represents my 17th week back in theaters, and in that time, I've now seen 30 movies. Three zero, that's how you say 30 in sign language. Three zero, 30. Uh, this week, I saw two movies. One of them, one of them's a twist. There's a twist coming. Okay. Or, as, as I like to call it, a Shyamalan. Get ready for a Shyamalan in this week's installment of Steve Stubbs, okay? Okay. Okay, so this week I saw the following movies. Halloween Kills and The Last Duel. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, so it was a good week. Well, first, let's discuss the movie that was not chosen as my Halloween, as, as my uh, movie pick of the week. Halloween Kills. I took this one seriously. So what I did was, uh, and I mentioned this last week, but I never took the Halloween movie series that seriously. It, you know, Halloween, great. Halloween 2, a little bit less great. Halloween 3, great in its own right. That, has, that is in no way related to any of the other movies. Right. The rest are shit. And I never saw the new ones. I saw the uh, Rob Zombie one and then cried and then uh, blocked it out of my memory. Yes. So did you hear in the new Monsters reboot being directed by Rob Zombie? You're not going to believe who's starring in it. Oh, Sherry Moon, of course. Sherry Moon Zombie. What? How did he manage to nab her for this film? <laughs> because it, she she's such a great actress that she's in so many other non Rob Zombie films. Yes, because she's such an incredible freaking thespian. Yes. So, so I, I never cared too much about the Halloween movies beyond the the first three films, and then I saw somewhere online a chart of the timeline of the Halloween movie franchise. And it's really insane because, like, here's Halloween 1, here's Halloween 2. And there's a direct line between Halloween 1 and Halloween 2. Way over here is Halloween 3. You're not supposed to pay attention to that. And Halloween 2 goes on the line directly to Halloween 4, 5, 6. And then straying from Halloween 2 is a sub-tangent uh, where here's... Uh, it's Halloween 7 and Halloween 8. And then way down here is Rob Zombie's Halloween and Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. And then straying from the original Halloween is 2018's Halloween. And so it, it seems so bizarre and convoluted that I said, I'm going to put this in a folder and I'm going to save this chart and then I'm going to download every Halloween film. Uh, okay. be because I really wanted to wrap my head around all of this. And then right before Halloween Kills came out, I saw someone on Twitter and he said, oh, hey, I've been thinking about 
uh, horror movie timelines, which one do you think is the best? And I immediately put, oh my goodness, if we're talking about timelines, wrap your brain around this piece of crap. And I posted the chart that I found somewhere. Yeah. And that was... That was nine days ago, and people are still liking it and white mansplaining how it's wrong to me. Okay. And it's really pissing me off because it's like, hey, someone um, commented about something on my Twitter. Let me check. It's just a fucking... Okay, I get it. You like five. I don't care. Yeah. Oh, you're going to explain to me why people didn't understand Rob Zombie's Halloween's? I don't give a shit. So I was really pissed off at the Halloween franchise for a while, and I was going to not see Halloween Kills. Well, that made you you angry at the franchise? Yes, it did. Okay. It did. The fanboys made me pissed off at the franchise. It hasn't happened. This this is the first time this has ever happened. Shut up, Star Wars. So... Uh, so I said on the day I, I got a ticket for Halloween Kills and I said, okay, I'm going to watch this and I'm going to take it seriously because the day I was going to watch it was Monday and my kids had off of school. Yeah. So I said, what am I going to do on Monday? The kids would be playing games, playing with each other, running around, playing in the porch, playing in the front yard, playing in the backyard. What am I going to do? I had an all-day Halloween marathon. Okay. I watched the original Halloween. I will, and then right after that, I watched Halloween 2. And let me tell you something about Halloween 2. Great acting from Jamie Lee Curtis's wig. Yes. Horrible acting from everyone else. I was really impressed to see The Last Starfighter in it. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit, The Last Starfighter is in this? Oh, well, he's going to be the hero. And he's knocked out great okay that was a mislead and why is every hospital dark as fuck yeah right god damn it someone needs to do a realistic fucking hospital in a goddamn horror movie it's this 10 story hospital only 8 people work there and there's no fucking lighting I call bullshit And especially since hospitals typically are brighter than the fucking sun. Brighter than the surface of the sun itself. It's fucking ridiculous. And there's always noise. There's always all of these doctors and nurses and patients. And even if there's not that noise, there's the noise of the goddamn neon lights that are constantly buzzing. Yeah. It's just it's it's a constant source of noise. So uh, so I watched Halloween, and then I watched Halloween two, and then I watched Halloween three, which I hadn't watched for a while. Did we do it? No, we have not. I I haven't watched it. Christ, I might not have watched it since it came out. I was shocked by that. I swore to fucking God we had done that, and I checked all of SoundCloud and YouTube, and I was shocked to see we didn't do that movie. I was shocked. So, so I saw Halloween, Halloween 2, Halloween 3, and 2018's Halloween. Yeah. Which I love. That was great. 2018's Halloween? I think I completely missed that. It was wonderful, and I absolutely loved it. it was, it's a direct sequel to Halloween, and you don't have to watch all of the shit about... Uh, you, a cult and uh, ancient evil and yada 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 and Busta Rhymes is in one of them and oh we're we're streaming inside of Michael Myers' home what he's here he's killing us no you can just watch the first Halloween which is fucking great and then go straight to 2018's Halloween and uh, it, I really liked it, it it's yeah. really good so I was really psyched to watch the second film, Halloween Kills. So I went to the theater, and I was all hyped up, and I was all excited, and I'm like, yes, Halloween Kills. Okay. Halloween Kills was sequeled to death. It, it, it... 
Halloween Kills has trilogyitis. Okay. Let me explain trilogyitis. Hey, we we want to do a whole franchise of Pirates of the Caribbean movies. We think this could be a popular franchise that could go on forever. We can start with a trilogy, but you know what? Let's just do one movie. It'll be standalone, just one standalone film. And if that's successful, then yeah, we can do a second one and a third one. And that's basically what happened with the new Halloween trilogy. There was Halloween in 2018. In 2021, there came Halloween Kills, which is the movie I saw this week. It t- it 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 picks up right where the last one uh, left off. I was hoping that they would kind of ride that because the first film took place in 2018. And I would have liked 2021's Halloween Kills, which took place after 2018, to be like, oh man, I can't believe Michael Myers is still at large. We should stop him. But first, maybe we should just touch everyone's faces and then spit in each other's mouths. Because it's 2018. (coughs) You know what I hate about Michael Myers? He's wearing a mask. One thing I'll never do is wear a face mask. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen to have them to had some have some fun with it. You know what movie <coughs> I love? The Dark Knight Rises. Man, uh, uh, that director will never make a bad movie. Maybe he can make one where things go time goes in reverse, and everyone's singing like Gangnam Style. <laughs> I would have liked that. But the problem is, is that the 2018 Halloween was a success. So now they, they are working on, at the same time, they filmed Halloween Kills, and then the sequel, which is coming out next year, which is called Halloween Dies. And so Halloween Kills is fine, but it is in no way a standalone film. It picks up exactly where part one leaves off, and does nothing but set up the third film. And then there's the cop, and the cop's like, I could have stopped Michael Myers in 1978, and I didn't, and I need to be the one that kills him. Okay, bye. See you in the third one. And then, uh, like, uh, Laurie Strode, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis is like, I'm in the hospital. I've been injured. But Michael Myers is coming, and I've got a knife, and I'm going to be ready for him. He's not going to come. That's for the third film. Bye! <laughs> and, and it's like, why am I seeing this film if all you're doing is fucking cock-teasing for a third film in a trilogy? Yeah. It, it, it was a disappointment, and, and I was a bit let down. There still were some funny parts. So uh, the, okay, was, wait, 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 wait. So the 2018 movie was what happened in 1978? No, no. Uh, The 2018 Halloween is a direct sequel to 1978's Halloween, which takes place in 2018. Oh, okay. And one part that really confused me is that everyone said, this is a direct sequel to the original. This is a direct sequel to the original Halloween. This is a direct sequel to 1978's Halloween. You don't even need to pay attention to any of the other films. And then, like, oh, these kids are, are like, oh, you want us to hide? Oh, we're not going to hide. We're, like, 13 years old. We're pieces of shit. We can do whatever the fuck we want. Screw you, adult. And they're wearing the Halloween 3 masks, and it's like, okay, but... If you're saying this is a direct sequel I, to the first Halloween, that does throw me off. And then there's a scene in Halloween Kills where they show for about five seconds a scene from Halloween 2. Okay. And it's like, wait a second. You just showed me the masks from Halloween 3, and you just showed me a clip from Halloween 2. You lying sacks of shit. Is Buster Rhymes going to show up in this fucking movie? It pissed me off. It pissed me off. It pissed me off. A little bit. It pissed me off a little bit. So, 
uh, it was a good film, and I'm and I will love it when the third movie comes out. Okay. And according to uh, Wikipedia, the third film, Halloween Dies or Halloween Ends, I think it's called Halloween Dies. That movie will be coming out next year, and it will be set in 2021. So not only will the people in that film be dealing with the the deaths that happened in 2018, but they'll also be dealing with the pandemic and the coronavirus and the lockdowns. So that would be really exciting to have Michael Myers just be like, have his knife and then be like, wait, hand sanitizer. Yeah. Gotta, gotta be, can't be too careful, huh? Uh-huh. Careful. And then he finds a way to like stab people six feet away. Like maybe he has this knife on a stick. Yeah. And he's just stabbing from afar. That maybe would be he good can... for 3D. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Maybe he can like throw knives. You know, like a like a carnival guy. Yeah. Just throwing knives. I'm really disappointed. Let me tell you why I'm disappointed. Right before we started recording, I saw that the drive-in that's only about 40 minutes away, 30 minutes away in Oklahoma City. Last year, oh, they showed the best double feature on the weekend before Halloween. They showed the original Nightmare on Elm Street and the original Friday the 13th. And my wife and I went to that, and it was a date night, and we had a, a fucking blast. And they just announced what they're showing this weekend right before Halloween. And it's the original Halloween, and Halloween kills. Yeah. And it's like, number one, I'm already fucking Halloweened out. Number two, you're showing movies one and three, basically. Yeah. If Halloween from 2018 is a sequel, then Halloween Kills is technically number three, and the third film in the trilogy will be film four. It's all fucking convoluted. But anyway, yeah. Halloween Kills, it's a fine film. There are some really good deaths in it. I'm surprised that one of two of the main characters were... Anthony Michael Hall and one of the guys from Mad TV. Okay. That really weirded me out. Not but Marvin. I think it was the guy who played Stuart. Yeah? Yeah. Oh my god. And he was in it and he was gay and it, his character was great. And, and Anthony you Michael... You just said he was in it. <laughs> I, I, I was just really surprised that, that a guy from Mad TV had a massive amount of screen time in yeah. one of the Halloween movies. But, yeah, there you go. So, so Halloween kills. It'll be a great film once all of the movies are out. Until then, eh. So that's Halloween kills. And finally, the Steve Stubbs pick of the week is The Last Duel. The Last <laughs> Duel. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I, I'm getting a little confused because it seems like there are currently like two Matt Damon movies or something like that that are out that both suck. I don't know about the other one, but the last Matt Damon movie I remember is Downsized, and that was fucking weird. Yeah. That was a weird-ass movie, Downsized. Where everyone shrinks. Okay, so I wasn't excited to see the last duel because, like, oh, it, you know, I'm going to the movies and I, I tell my wife and kids, oh, "Hey, honey, I'm going to the movies." Oh, really? Okay, have a good have a good night. What movie are you watching? Oh, I'm going to watch a two hour and forty minute medieval rape drama. Okay. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be a uh, non-stop laugh a minute thrill fest. I'm sure this film is going to be funny, hilarious, a, a real, a real, you know, real a wonderful film. So I wasn't excited to go see the film. It, it, it is, it is safe to say I wasn't excited to go see this movie. And and I'm like, ah, oh, I'm going to go see The Last Duel. I, I didn't want to go see the movie, but I've never seen an episode of The Sopranos, and I haven't seen any of the new James Bond movies. So it's like, I guess I'm going to see the medieval rape drama. 
And I, I'm like, oh, fuck, this is going to be okay, whatever. So I go to the movies, and once I get to the, uh, to the front of the theater, they have a, a big thing right in the front that shows all of the movies that they're showing in the time. I noticed that The Last Duel isn't on there. And that worries okay. me. So I get on my AMC Theaters app, and I'm like, wait a second, let me see my ticket. Oh, yeah, this is the right theater at the right time. Okay, I guess I'll ask the ticket lady. And, and I go up to her, and I go, hey, are you showing the last duel? Because I have a ticket. And she's like, yes, the manager has been waiting for you. Okay. We had to We had to pull the movie at the last minute. But here is a free ticket to go see a movie at a later date. And also, while you're here, feel free to just go in and watch whatever movie you want. Okay. Uh, we've got uh, the Sopranos movie. We've oh. got the new James Bond. We've got uh, 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 Dune just started. And, yeah. and I thought, like, huh, maybe I could go watch the new Dune movie. But then I realized I need to be ready for the new Dune movie. First off, yeah. I wasn't high. True. And I need to be high if I'm going to see the new Dune movie. Secondly, if I'm going, if I saw Halloween Kills and I had a four Halloween movie marathon, I need to see Kyle MacLachlan before I go see the new fucking Dune movie. Yes. So I wasn't prepared to see the new freaking Dune movie. So I went to see the new kids movie, Ron's Gone Wrong! <laughs> and it might be because I was prepared to groan my way through a two and a half hour medieval rape Oscar bait film, but Ron's Gone Wrong was fucking great. Okay. It's a movie about being a social outcast and how Facebook is fucking evil. Okay. Because there's this Google-like company and, um, you know, they have all these different apps. It's like if Google and Apple were, were one entity. And so they have all this really popular online a place where you can share things about yourself and your likes and dislikes and you can post things and you can live stream and so it's so popular with young people that they release a robot called a B-Bot that automatically connects to the company's cloud and knows everything about you and is designed to be your 100% best friend and can change its look and, and can it, it has all of these safety features and so this poor kid wants to buy one. His parents can't afford it. Uh, so he ends up buying one that fell out of a truck. He buys, he buys one, he buys a broken one on the cheap in an alleyway. And so he gives it to his son and the robot wakes up. But the, the, main, gist of it is, the main gist of it is number one, the robot's broken. And number two, because he didn't buy it from an official like an Apple store or whatever the fuck, it's not connected to the cloud. So it doesn't know anything about him. It doesn't know how to be a friend. It doesn't have safety features. It actually beats up a kid. Okay. And so the it, so it, it's really cute and it's really funny. The Facebook stuff comes from there are two people in charge of the company. There's the young guy who wears sweaters whose name is Mark. And it's like, hey, we just want everyone to have a friend. And we just want to make the world a better place. And then there's the money guy who is actually just using the B-Bots to spy on kids so that he can then sell the kids data because all the robot is to him is data mining and selling all of these kids' personal information. Yeah. So it's like a it's like a cute kids movie, and also, fuck Amazon, Google, Facebook, and that's a message I can get behind. Yeah. 
So it was a really good movie, and it was really funny, and I can't wait for it to come out it, it, as a digital download so I can show the kids, because they'll absolutely love it. Wonderful freaking film, and I can't uh, recommend it enough. So next week, I'm really excited. I will be seeing Dune, yes, and also with my free ticket, I will be taking Mao to a late-night showing of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Because I need someone to talk to about that. Okay. So, I might even try and see a third film. Wes Anderson's new movie did just <coughs> come out, but it's like an hour drive away. Yeah. And I'm debating maybe seeing three movies next week and trying to go see the new Wes Anderson film, but I just don't know. You know? Yeah. I just don't know. But anyway... Uh, yeah, so that's uh, my pick of the week. Not the last duel, but Ron's Gone Wrong. That was a Shyamalan. It was a twist ending. Ron's Gone Wrong is adorable, and I highly recommend it. And even as an adult, uh, there were some parts in that movie that I legitimately laughed out loud during. It was a very good movie, and I really liked it. So join us next week for some more up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week. And cut on that. <laughs>